Hi everybody! Today I'm going to be showing you the construction method for Zelda's corset. So this is how the whole thing was sewn together, including the faux front. It doesn't include the bonding or binding. First up, I had to make all my patterns. These are actually basically adapted from another corset that I have, which is why I don't have a demonstration of how I made the patterns. So once I had these, I then had to cut them all to shape, cut them all out, make sure they fit and the seam lines matched, and then make the false front. So this piece is the false front. It's actually a copy of the double, doubled over front panel piece. And then I cut it at the top, um, just below where that V is, and I cut it at the bottom, just above where the point starts. This is so it's a squared off piece that is, can't be seen from the outside, but holds the, the strength of the corset. So to make the false front, I cut this front piece in two different fabrics. I'm using Gold Rose Bricketeal and Faux Dupion. I needed two copies of each of these pattern pieces. The cotille is a strength layer, meaning this holds all the weight of the corset and holds the boning in place. And the faux, du the faux dupion is the fashion layer, so this is what's going to be seen from the outside. So to get them to behave as one layer, I'm going to flatline them together. So you can see I'm just clipping around the edge of the piece. I clip rather than pinning, because pinning leaves lumps. And then on a very long stitch, I'm just going to go around the edge of the corset. This just stabilises it and makes sure the fabric behaves as a single piece, rather than two different layers. they've been flatlined I'm going to fold the thing in half and sew down that outer edge which is the longer edge. This means it will get a very clean fold line when I fold it in the middle. So again I'm using clips to pin it in place, <laughs> refill the machine and then sewing along that longer edge which is the outside edge which will connect to the second panel and then I'm going to press it so it gets a nice crisp line and then after that I'm going to start sewing my boning channels. So my boning is seven millimeter and I'm going to need to make channels down the centre front. So the first thing I do is sew a line just about two millimetres in from that fold edge, as you can see here. Sewing this line makes the line really crisp and it doesn't look very baggy at the front. It also holds the bone more stable rather than just having it straight up against the folded edge. And then after this channel, I know that the bones are slightly smaller than the width of half my foot. So what I'm going to do is line this first row of stitching up the edge of my sewing machine foot, which will mean I have enough space for the boning to sit between the two lines. This is how I make my boning channels for the front and the back of my corsets, where all the lace is. And then I'm going to repeat this process, making another channel for the first set of eyelets and then another channel for the second bone. Having a bone each side of the eyelets means the eyelets are less likely to rip out as there is less pull and strain on that area of fabric. It also means that the front is going to be very perk and very stiff and it's not going to be li like likely to bend and warp at the front. And now my boning is going to fit nicely inside these channels. If you didn't want a fake front and you wanted a real lift front lacing corset, you won't need to make the second panel to go below this. But I'm going to, so I'm going to make that again in a moment. But now I have to figure out how I'm going to space my eyelets. There were seven eyelets down the front of the corset, so I took the length of the front panel, took a centimetre off each end to allow for the binding, and then divided this space by seven so I would know where to put each eyelet. I then put pins in to mark where I'm going to put the, put the eyelets. I will then do it on one side and then put the two pieces against each other 
mark through these new eyelet holes and then copy it onto the other side exactly. So now I'm going to set my eyelets. To set them, I first make the hole using a very cheap owl from eBay. That's A-W-A, uh, A-W-L owl. So this pushes the threads away from where you stab it. Um, I try and avoid cutting as many threads as possible when I'm making the holes for the eyelets because it weakens the area and it, you know, it cuts the fabric so it's more likely to rip. Or the owl pushes them away and then as soon as there's some tension on the fabric, they tighten up around the eyelet and grip it. So here I'm just using two part eyelets, oh, and I did have to cut some threads. I'm going to use two part eyelets where it has a washer that goes on the back and then it's just a five millimeter eyelet in the front. And then I've got a hand press, which I'll, you'll see me use in a second. The hand press is really good. It was very cheap from Aldi a couple of years ago. Some people have difficulty with hand presses, but they're very useful, especially if you're only doing a few eyelets. It is a lot easier to put eyelets in after you've put the boning in the sides. However, because of the method of construction on this front panel, I had to put the eyelets in before the bones, which wasn't ideal and it did make this process really, really slow. So my camera is about to run out of battery, but hopefully you'll be able to see how I actually set my eyelets. So now I'm cutting out the front panel. This is going to be the hidden panel below the front that supports the weight of the lacing. So I've cut it once out of the teal and I'm going to cut it again out of the faux dupion. I only need one copy of each this time. And if I had my head screwed on, then I would have had pink poly cotton lining. But I forgot. <laughs> and then I'll flat line the panel together in the same method we did earlier. And then I'm just going to do a very simple rolled hem twice over the top and bottom of the panel. This just makes a tidy finish. Now that back panel's done, I'm going to fix it to the back of the corset front. Um, again, I'll just use clips and then sew very closely to the edge. This means the two pieces are going to be attached and it's going to behave like a single piece. From the front, you can't see this behind, this extra panel behind, and it just looks like front lacing. But it won't be any strain on the actual laces or the eyelets because this back panel is going to take all the pressure. Meaning it's not going to warp, the laces aren't going to move, and it's going to look very tidy. Now 
Now for the actual construction. I'm going to be using fell seams and stitching through or sandwiching to make my boning channels. So this means I need quite a few fabrics. You can see the faux dupion is going on first, that's going to be my fashion fabric, and then a layer, a layer of calico. These get sewn down, these work very strongly together and the boning isn't going to rub through um, on the outside. And on the inside, in reverse, I'm going to be using cotille and then a pink polycotton for lining. So as you can see, I'm pinning these two outer fabrics to the front of the corset. And I'm going to stitch those in just because it's easy to stitch through two pieces and get those in place first. And then I'm going to put the other two fabrics behind with the pink fabrics always touching. This means it won't be, it will be pink from viewing. So the lining will be pink and the fashion layer will be pink. Because then when these fold around, the calico and the cotille will be touching each other. And then sewing channels through that will make very strong boning channels. So I'm sewing with just under a centimetre seam allowance. Yeah, just under a centimetre, which gives me enough room for boning channels. So once these two pieces are sewn on, I'm going to fold all of these four new pieces back on each other so that it's pink on either side, and then I'm going to top stitch them down into place as well as pressing them, but that's off camera. So you can see it folds over and it's pink, and I'm going to top stitch about a millimetre from the seam edge um, onto the new panel. This will carry the first line of the new boning channel. Um, doing this is called a fell seam method and it traps all the seam allowance inside the corset as you make it. Also I'm very sorry for the uh, sloppy camera work, this was still one of the first things I was filming and I forgot that my hair does get in the way a lot. This first bust seam is really tricky to get right because the corset is curved so much in this area you have to keep pulling the fabrics away from each other to get it to sit right as you stitch it doesn't matter if it takes a few attempts, just go slowly and do it at the speed you need to do it. So there you can see the seam, it's just a line of stitching right next to the seam. And I'm going to make another channel next to it. Same as the boning channels before, I'm using the edge of my sewing machine foot as the guide. And I'm just going to keep the stitching parallel to the edge of the foot and draw a new line in. So this is now a perfect boning channel for a single boned corset. I didn't want a single bone corset in the end, I decided to do double boning, which means a bo two bones on each seam. So to do that, I did the same boning channel but on the reverse. So instead I stitched it onto the front panel. So before the seam, I did about a, a seam about a millimetre away from the seam edge and then took another step out again. So that first channel I sewed was a felled seam which made the channel. And this second channel was a sandwich channel because it's just sandwiched between the two layers. The first seam is actually quite thick because it's actually got eight pieces of fabric folded in on each other. So I'm going to continue to use this method through the whole corset and that's how the assembly goes together for now. Some camera angles are better than, than others so hopefully you'll be able to see at least once how I'm doing this.
sewing the really curvy area at the waist can be really, really difficult. So I do it really slowly. This is real time. And I just keep moving the fabric and taking a stitch at a time just to keep it flat. Try and mitigate any wrinkles that are appearing and just go slowly. Keep trying to go in a straight line and keep your channels parallel. So keep the first line of stitching lined up with the edge of the foot. So in this case, when I've done that sandwich um, channel, instead of doing the, the, the stitch line that's close to the seam first, I've done the outer line first. This is because you can see I'm using the edge of the foot to push it against to the thickness of the actual seam, which is a really good guide. And then later on, I'm gonna just go back and do that closer channel. You can actually use a half foot on this case if you then need an extra guide for doing this internal this closer seam, because then the half foot would again press up next to the fullness of the other seam. But in this case, I was too lazy to get the half foot out. So this is why I was doing it in this order in the waist area, because it was a neater finish. So I decided I wanted to try a different method for finishing the back. So I have my back panel, which is the shape of the back panel and then doubled over, much like the front. So it can be folded for boning channels to be made in the same way. But I decided I actually wanted to line it and close the corset slightly differently. So I copied out the folded shape of the back panel. And then I measured from the previous pattern how wide the boning channel area would be with my pattern master and transferred this measurement onto the new panel. So this line would be the cut line for the lining and then I put a line a step in, so one centimetre in, which was going to be the actual stitch line or the visible, the functioning line for where my lining would be. So that the lining would finish and then have a centimetre gap and then it would be the boning area. This would be really useful if I was to sew a modesty panel, I could sew it in before as I close the lining. So this is my tiny little lining panel. This will be cut in um, the pot pink poly cotton, where the rest of the back is going to get the same treatment as the front, so it will just be in the faux dupion and the cotille. So now I'm making the back panels in the exact same method as I made the front. So each piece is cut from two layers of fabric and they are flat lined together and then folded and then the channels are stitched. So now to attach these pieces to the corset, I've clipped the back to the front of the corset, so this would be the fashion layer, and I'm clipping the lining in on the other. Because the back is essentially a self-contained piece, there aren't lots of layers to contend with this time. It's just the back panel and then the lining layer. I'm gonna sew these on in the same stitch just because there's not that many moving parts. As you can see on the lining, I've actually ironed a centimeter fold 
This is what I meant by the seam allowance and the stitch line. I folded it over on the stitch line and now the seam allowance is pointing in. I'm going to be top stitching this down into place so it's handy to pre-iron it and get a straight line, a very neat line, before I sew it to the corset. And then I'm going to make some boning channels in the same method on the rest of the corset. It's just a bit tricky this time because there's a lot of fabric to move when you're making the channels at the back. And be sure not to catch the lining underneath. And then to close the corset up completely, I'm going to fold this pink lining over and pin it in place. And then a really simple top stitch down this lining layer. You will have a line of stitching on the outside, but I'm not too fussed by that. And this is a really, really tidy way to get all the seams inside finished. So the inside of this corset is really neat and I'm really pleased with it, apart from the fact I forgot to line that front panel right at the beginning. So I had forgot to put the extra back layer, back channels on this panel, so I'm just going to do that now and then I'm going to do those final channels up and down this last seam. And that is the body of the corset done. So this is the construction method I use on nearly every corset, it's my favourite method. Um, so then after this I put the boning in, I put the binding on and then I started to put the eyelets in and do all of that embroidery. Ta-da! So that's how it looked after all of those little bits of work. This isn't finished yet, I've still got a lot to do, but I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching.